my immediate answer would be no, but <laughs> here I am, like, <laughs> what the fuck? Hi, hola, my name is Brittany Santana, Brittany Santana, and today in this video we're going to be talking about if you should be an animator or if you shouldn't based on yourself. This is from my perspective, basically I'm a freelance animator, kind of like a hobbyist, kind of not. I am basically not a full-time animator, I have another job. That's kind of like where this video is going to be coming from. This video was inspired by a question that I saw on Reddit. I don't know if animation's career or animations, but on an animation Reddit. And there was this guy or girl asking how they can make animation less tedious for them. And my response in the Reddit post was basically, sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. My personal experience with animation is that for me, the most tedious part of animation, being a traditional animator, like a frame by frame animator, whatever, is the coloring and line art phase, especially the coloring phase. And you can say why. Well, basically, I, as some of you may know, hate coloring. <laughs> now I don't hate it, but for most of my life, I hated coloring. I saw no point in it. I thought it was a lot of work for not much of a difference. I really liked drawings that were made with pencil and only, like no colors. And just recently, like when I was 20, 21, did I start liking coloring a little more. I liked painting a little more, and now I actually paint stuff. But till this day, coloring is like the least favorite part in animation. And that's just because of my past and how I feel about coloring. Obviously, there's gonna be another animator that's gonna be like, oh, this part is the like the least favorite for me and maybe I love that part. Maybe someone hates in-betweens and I love in-betweens. Someone like hates keyframes and someone loves keyframes. It's basically um, based on you, honestly, and what you find important or not in an animation scene. In this Redditor's case, he was actually a frame by frame or traditional animator too, and he said that what he most hated was the in-between phase. And honestly, there's going to be a truth and uh, a reality to these kind of things. An animator is someone that draws or animates still things or still life to make it appear as it has life or movement on its own. That being said, there's things that you have to have in order to be an animator or you have to try to gain to be able to pursue this as a career if you want it to be. For example, as a, a traditional animator, if you're telling me you don't like to draw, then that's already the problem here. A traditional animator draws and draws and draws, and that's how he makes the animation possible. So if you don't like to draw, then you shouldn't be an animator, a traditional animator at least, at all, because that is basically the foundation of what this animation is about. You can be other types of animation, you can do 2D animation, you can be a rigger if you like animating, for example, but you don't like to draw, you can be a rigger. You don't have to draw the character, you can just, once the character is with their like rigs and stuff, you just have to make it move and you didn't have to draw a thing. If you hate drawing, that's an option. 3D animation, the same thing. You can be a rigger on 3D animation. You just don't have to draw. You are an animator because you're actually making it like look and appear as it has life and you don't have to draw. Kinda, you have to know yourself to be able to take a career decision. Not just in animation like, oh I love uh, medicine but I hate this and maybe that thing you hate is fundamental to medicine then it's like you shouldn't even be trying to do this career if you hate the fundamentals to that career and that's something you have to be uh you have to look at yourself and be honest oh i'm someone that's super lazy then you're gonna you're gonna do a career that's super hard or something that takes a lot for you no maybe you love to sleep are you gonna take a career or a job that makes you sleep really little that's not made for you then you have to think of those things to, in order for first to take a decision. Now that doesn't mean you can't think some things are boring or tedious. As I said, you may love 2D animation and you like to draw, but you find in-betweens tedious. And that's fine, it's not like, oh then you shouldn't be an animator, then you shouldn't be this. It's fine to, like sometimes, just not feel like it. Now let's take a difference here. 
<laughs> now let's make a difference here. Is animating tedious in general or is this animation that I'm doing right now tedious? Because there are people that are going to say, I love reading books. And you give them this book and they don't read it. And months pass, a year pass, and you're like, why didn't you read that book? Oh, but you said you liked reading books. Yes, they do, but they like reading the books that they like. If I like um, romance books, I'm not going to go and read a book, I don't know, about ancient Egypt. Because I'm not interested. I'm interested in romance books. I love reading romance books. So maybe you like animation, but let's say this animation that you're doing, you're not really interested in it. Maybe it's a client's animation and you think the idea is really dumb or you think it's not going to look pretty in the end or you think there's a billion other better ways to make this look cooler, but you can't do it because the client's like, no, I want it like that. And that's why it's tedious for you because you're not on board for it. And it's okay, you don't have to be on board to it because honestly, it's for a client. You're, get, you're getting paid for it. You don't have to like it necessarily. Obviously, if you have like a better standing and you look better economically, you can say no to the client and be like, no, I'm not going to do this job. I'm going to do other jobs if you have like a better standing in like money wise. If you can't, then you just have to accept the job because you need the money. But maybe that's why it's tedious for you. Maybe the thing that you're doing is not fun. Maybe you've done billions of walk cycles and this is just another walk, walk cycle. And you're like, again, and that's why you think it's tedious. Maybe what you're animating is really hard. And that's because you haven't been drawing that. You don't know how to. And you think it's tedious because to animate, you need a lot of patience. It's one of the arts that is Basically, you have to do a long wait, wait, wait until you see the final product. It's one of the last ones you see. And basically, you have to have patience for that. And if you're doing things that you don't like on the process, there's obviously going to be parts where you, where you just want to stop. You don't want to continue. But you have to think, is the whole thing, is the, like, the whole animation thing not for me? Or is just this type of things not for me because I don't like them, because I've done them too many times, because they don't fulfill me creatively, because they're too complicated for me at the moment with my skills at the moment. You have to think about that because maybe it's just something that's in this scene, that's in this moment, and you're just going to scrap everything out just because one thing bothered you. Something I didn't think about until I saw the response on the Reddit post Someone actually posted like, do the process short or like cut your in-betweens or cut your scenes. And that's something I actually do and I didn't realize that I was doing that exact thing. If you know, if like if you've seen my other videos, I talk about how I animate in scenes. I do once, like I have a whole animation and I divide them in each scene done. In like that will be portrayed in the animation for example. And when I finish a scene, I feel like I finished an animation because I took it as an individual thing. I don't do the full animation on one, like on one go. Now I'm like, okay, once I finish all this scene, like I finish like the drawings, the line eyes, the coloring, the music, I combine everything. I do every small thing until like if it's an, a, like an individual animation. I finish everything and to me that feels like a finished animation. I don't feel it as oh this is a finished scene. I feel the same reward. And maybe maybe if you're feeling animation is tedious, divide it up a little more cuz maybe you're like oh my god this scene needs 100 200 drawings. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Divide it and you're like oh this scene just needs 50 and feel that 50 reward because they, you're basically making your brain hit yourself before even doing it. Because sometimes I do that too. Sometimes I'm like, oh my god, I need to animate this. This is going to be so hard. But when I'm animating it, I don't feel like frustrated or I don't feel that tediousness. And that's because my br I'm just being negative before even trying it. So just if you actually feel the negativity, 
when you're doing it, then try to make it shorter for yourself. Something that I recommend that at least a full-time animator do is when you, something doesn't go well, an animation is just like not going to you, it's like you're just not getting it done, distract yourself, do something else. And that you can take a day, you can take a week, you can take a month. Obviously it depends on how urgent you need this animation and that's the reality. If you are a full-time animator, maybe you need it sooner than you, you would like. But distracting yourself, not thinking about it, most of the times people actually recommend when you animate, when you paint, to take a distance because maybe you're like, oh, this is beautiful, okay, it's finished, and it's less, it's like your brain, like the quick, like your brain wanting to end it talking more. So it's like, oh yeah, it's beautiful, girl. Oh yeah, 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 it's already done. And if you distract yourself and take a moment, you go back to the drawing and you're like, this is horrible. But it was your brain, like your brain's patience running low and telling you like, okay, get it over with, get it over with. And most of the time, if you spend so much like energy and time like in this animation, you want it to look good. You don't want it to look ugly. You don't want people to mock it. You don't want something so precious to you to not turn out how you like. So take your time with it if you can. Especially if you're just starting and you're already frustrated like, oh my anatomy, oh my lighting, oh my, you can't learn everything in a day. You can't like go around the world in a day. So don't try to do and learn everything quickly. Okay, you're not really good at anatomy right now. Well, doesn't matter. Get like the principles of animation done. Like try timing, try spacing, try other things. Then you think about animation, like anim anatomy, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> If you're not good with backgrounds, put a like a white background, doesn't matter. Just focus on animation, focus on the characters, focus on like the flow of the animation. If you're good with backgrounds but you're not good with drawing people, make that background excellent. Uh, like make that background be beautiful and animate that background. Don't even put characters in it. Just put the background and animate the background. Don't focus and on everything because you'll never be able to go step by step for example my first explainer video like that's it explainer videos have been really popular recently my first explainer video is much worse than my recent one and i didn't necessarily try to better my explainer videos i just kept on practicing what i what i was already doing and those things will influence your more recent animations without you even knowing Especially if you continue to practice things, you will always get better. Another thing that you have to really be realistic about is you have to study or at least have a little bit of knowledge about what animation is before being an animator or trying to be one. I remember when it w I was in university for animation, I was in my first year and I remember this girl being like, or this guy, I don't know who it was, but it was a classmate of mine and seeing like, Oh, I didn't know this was gonna be so, like, I had to draw to be an animator. And I was there and I was like, I, was, I wasn't with him, but I was like listening, like I was eavesdropping basically. And I was like, then why are you in this career? Before I basically paid <laughs> for my tuition, I knew what I was gonna do. I knew what animation was. I knew, I saw videos of what was hard about the career. I knew what was easy and what was cool about it. I knew a lot of things. Obviously, I wasn't an animator, but I knew enough to be like, yes, I wanna do this as a career. And this person like is in class and he's like, you have to do all this to do animation? Like, I'll, I'm not on board to it. And obviously, after a few months, she basically left the university and that's fine but it's kind of like you paid for nothing and you spent your time on nothing because you didn't take time before to even know what you were getting into so that's something that honestly that's on you and you should know first and foremost animation is something that takes a lot of patience a lot of determination and a lot of self-discipline um, basically you're not gonna be the idea of the movie. You're not gonna be the central focus piece of the movie. You're gonna be probably the person in the small uh, screen after all the credits. 
And that is, for me, I really want that. I want to be like that person that is in the movies and be like, oh my God, that one second scene, that was me. <laughs> yeah, that was me. That girl that moved that hand, that was me. <laughs> and why? Because I'm not the creative type. Um, yes, I like to draw, I like to paint, but I don't really like imagine stuff. Normally I like to draw or paint things that I see in real life, pretty things that I see in real life or things that people ask for me. So for me, animation is perfect because I like to create things. I like to see my creation come to life, but I don't necessarily feel or want my own imagination to come out in that creation. I am fulfilled by just doing someone else's dream and creating it. And if you're not, then you should maybe start in animation and learn about animation, but take a different career. Storyboard, uh, cinematography, director, producer, become something else inside the animation industry, but has more creative input on the industry. Another problem that you probably will have in all like careers, not only animation, is something that I see a lot in people my age or younger, is that we want everything now, we want everything fast, we want everything pretty, we want everything handed to us. And the effort we want put in is really small. I can say that as a small YouTuber, I can say that as someone who has a lot of friends with my age, and I can say that as an animator too. For example, I was in animation school and I had to go like take public transport to get to my university and it was really far and I had to get to my university really really, really early I had to go back home I had one free hour a day and then I had to go to work which my work was also far from my home so basically I had no, no free time and at the time I was getting to know my boyfriend and I remember him telling me like oh you have no life and some of you may think like, oh, that's horrible, or like, oh, how could he say that? He was being honest, for, like he saw my schedule and he was like, oh, you don't have no life. You don't have a life, basically. And I was like, yeah, I don't. And I knew I wasn't gonna have one and I'm proud to not have one. Because I knew that since I don't come from a privileged place where my parents can pay for my tuition, that can pay for my books, that can pay for my stuff, I don't come from like a family that has that type of money. Animation careers are expensive. Like books are expensive. Like art materials are expensive. So I knew that I had to pay for my own college. So obviously it's hard. It's really hard to work and study. There was girls in my in my college where they were like, oh my God, I studied all day for this exam. I woke up and I didn't stop studying. And that's great, but I couldn't do that. I couldn't be like, oh, I got, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna study all day because I have to, I have to work. I have to be there on time. I can't be like, oh, I'm not gonna work today. I'm not gonna go. No, because I can't afford that. They have the opportunity to have parents that pay for their stuff. So their only thing they're doing is studying. And I think that's great. But most of the girls that I was with, like I was friends with, they had or kids, they had a, a like a partner, like a, a like a spouse, they had a career, they had a job, they had some other responsibilities. So obviously, when you're not in that privileged position, you have no benefits. There's always a meme that's like, if you study good and you have like good grades and you go to sleep like at like good hours then you don't have a social life if you have a social life then you don't study if you don't have if you don't if you study and you have a social life then you don't sleep there's always that meme going around and people like it but they don't want to experience it it's like oh yeah that's funny but i don't want to live that thing <laughs> and that's the reality if you don't want to study then that's fine go and do like be like do an office job or like specialize in something but the reality is things are hard work now let me be clear i'm not trying to be negative i'm not trying to like push the reality on you but it is something that you have to think about not only in this career in animation or in other things the most important thing is passion passion and resilience because the reality is there are going to be hardships hardships anytime you do something 
And something that I experienced personally is when I first thought about following my passion, following something that I love, I was like, do I even love something? And you don't have to necessarily love what you're doing in order to be happy. Right now, at the moment, animation is not my full-time job. I love animation, but at the same time, I also love not having it as my full-time job yet. Because, for example, right now, I'm not doing any animations as for clients. I'm just like doing my own animations or things that I feel like it. And sometimes I don't feel like it. Sometimes I have art blogs. And yeah, sometimes I want to get over my art block, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm like, I'm just gonna let it go. I'm just gonna, when it comes, it comes. In this time, a lot of people tell you, follow your passion, follow your passion, follow your passion. And sometimes you don't have to, and that's not the best thing. The reason it's your passion is because you have more positive feelings towards it than negative. And when you become, like, you make something your job, you have to accept the negatives of making it your job and the positive. Sometimes I don't feel like going to work and I go anyways. Does that mean I hate my job? No, there's just sometimes I feel like sometimes I don't, but I do it because it's my job. What I like about having animation right now as not my full-time job is sometimes I don't feel like drawing and I don't have to force myself to draw. And I like that because I don't want to have negative feelings towards my drawings or negative emotions towards animation. Obviously, there will come a time where I have to question myself and be like, do I want to do this as a career and or like as my job and see what is my answer? But you can be an animator, you can do it and not have to make that your job. You can enjoy animation and when you don't enjoy it, stop and just do other things because that's the privilege of having your passion as your passion or your hobby. So maybe that's something you should ask yourself too. Like, should I be an animator? Should I go to college for it? Or maybe you, maybe you can be an animator just at your home. Maybe when you're free time, you can animate. And when I, my first animation, I did it because I, I felt like it. I was like a, I don't know if I was a teenager. But I did it not because I was like, oh, maybe I want to do this as a career or maybe I'm interested. Maybe I just thought like, oh, I think I had this idea and I just animated it and I animated it in paint. It didn't have a good animation, but I did it. That was my first animation. And I continue to do those types of animations because I feel like it. And that's the privilege of having being an animator. You can be an animator and not necessarily have it as a career. Those are two different things. As for me, what is my answer? Should I be an animator or not? Is yes. I love animation. I really find it great. I love seeing the finished product. That's something that really I really like it and seeing how things go pro like progressively right. Is, I love it. That being said, I don't pressure myself in making it my job. I do what I enjoy. I enjoy just doing it for light, for like for the gist of it, for fun. And now I enjoy doing other clients' projects and like getting like paid to do it. And I will progressively do what I like. And that's great. I love animation. I love drawing, to be exact. So a lot of drawings is great, but I do think there's like a major difference in just drawing and just seeing the drawing than to like see the full scope of what you can do. Seeing the process is great. So for me, animation is really something that I love. That's kind of what I wanted to talk about. Like since I responded to the Redditor's like question, I responded it pretty quickly, but ever since I saw the question, I've been thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. So that's why I made this video because I thought it was a really interesting thing to talk about. And I hope you found this video really informative or helpful. Or if you didn't, like you can leave a question below and I'll try to answer it. But I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, then I hope to see you very soon in the next video, if you wish. Bye!